I typically begin these by asking how many of my typing sessions you've seen before. Um, so I think in, in the beginning, maybe like maybe a couple of years ago, I watched one or two, but then more recently I, I decided to not watch them because I kind of wanted to not know what questions. Uh, you were going to be asking. <laughs> sure. Okay. Can you tell me in a sequence of inconsequential details what you did today? Okay. Um, so, got up. Uh, got brushed teeth. Uh, took a shower. Work. Uh, ate. Ate food. Uh, What'd you eat? Uh, ramen. Uh, a ramen bowl. How was uh, it? Um, it was it was it was good. I mean, yeah, it was it was just I would just call it good. It was, it was good. <laughs> Are you picky about food in general? I, 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 not really, no. I used to be. I used to be when I, uh, when I was younger. Um, but as I grew up, I started being able to eat anything. I actually started liking to eat. <laughs> um, more. <laughs> okay, when you were younger, what were you picky about? Um, so I'm originally from Nigeria. And, uh... So I'm originally from Nigeria. I was born in the Netherlands. Uh, so I grew up with a Western type of cuisine. Uh, and then when my parents took me back to Nigeria, I would basically not eat an, almost none of the, our cultural food for like a, a while. They would always have to cook separate stuff for me. It's like regular food, but with flies on it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I didn't at that at the time I thought the taste was was bitter. So the soups that they would use, I thought they were bitter. Mm. That that I think that's what I remember. <laughs> cool. Right. So yeah. were you having to come back to the West? I'm sorry. Did you you eventually came back to the West? I take it, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then yes. then you started eating again, and you're like, phew. <laughs> 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 I don't blame you. <laughs> Um, okay, cool. So, uh, can you talk to me about your sleep habits? How many hours of sleep do you think you need to get a night? And if you go to bed at a regular time and get up at a regular time, or if it's random? Um, it, it is random. It is random. Uh, sometimes I get into a good groove where it's like for a whole week, I've been doing good. I go to bed by 10 or 11. But then sometimes, I guess it's sometimes especially maybe if i'm like really really like interested in something some like philosophical topic or something and i'm just like oh you know what? i'm just gonna like binge this and i really won't think about like sleep or anything uh but yeah no it's it, it changes sometimes i have like, like i i maybe do eight hours so go to uh, go to bed 10 wake up six seven um and other times, I might go to bed at like 5 a.m., wake up 8 a.m., start the day. And um, what does it feel like when you don't get enough sleep? Uh, yeah, I can't say that I know what it feels like. I, I, okay. I, I don't know if you know the difference. <laughs> okay. What about emotions? Uh, do you know what you're emotionally feeling right now? Um, normal. Okay. And how about physically? How are you feeling physically right now? Um, well, I did, so I did go, uh, I played some, I went, went to the range with a few friends and we're doing some, uh, some puts over there. And my back is maybe a little bit, but only when you ask me that, I that I think about that. <laughs> okay. Um... When you go out and do things, 
are you how much are you keeping in mind before you go out and do things how long you're going to be out whether you're well dressed enough stuff like that I almost do not think about that I, I even to the point where when I hear people say should I wear a sweater it's, some, it's very it's like a strange word like it's so strange when I hear someone asking someone what they should wear uh, going to a place. Now, do, do you ever find yourself underdressed, like you didn't bring enough clothes and you're cold? Yes. And then are you tough about that, or does that make you miserable? I'm tough about that. I pretend it's not happening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, so... Uh, when you're not watching anything that's teaching you anything, when it's not informative, it's just entertainment, what kind of media do you watch in terms of TV, movies, that kind of stuff? Um, so like, uh, probably, probably suspense, uh, mystery, uh, so like TV shows, like, uh, like, like Breaking Bad, uh, that, that was when I was, or, or, or anything with like an element of like magic, um, uh, yeah. magic or uh, long adventures, long drawn out adventures. Um, okay. Any, anything with, with those. So like Westworld, that's like, that's a super interesting one that I've, I've been watching and excited when I saw the new season coming out because those type of subjects interest me. Um, and what's uh, the, what's the basic premise of Westworld? Um, artificial intelligence uh, is created and start, has started to become sentient. Okay. Um, do you have any crea- creative outlets? I used to write. Um, I I used to write a lot uh, for that. So. Um, I, I, I think I came to the conclusion that it was mostly through writing. Um, there was a, there was a time back in 2019, uh, or 2018 where for a year straight, like I would be journaling almost every single day. And then I, I just started really like, uh, I don't know if you know, uh, the website Quora. I started writing a lot on Quora. Like I just find questions. Like I just enjoyed just exchanging. What kind of questions do you answer? Um, they were MBTI mm. uh, related. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, so you're more likely to write, at least for public consumption, informative stuff than you are, say, fiction or something. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, can you talk to me about what you think makes a good Quora answer? A, a good Quora answer. Oh, um, okay. Uh, hmm. Uh, so, so, so typically, I like if the person states from the onset uh, if they're giving if, if they're giving an answer based on uh, anecdotal experience or based on uh, statistical analysis or, or so- something. And if it saying that at the outset um, uh, be, uh, on the answer is, is usually good good for me. And then I judge it based on those uh, two categories where I'm like, okay, if it's, if it's a uh, statistical uh, ans- answer to a question, then that I can check. I can check and verify. Um, but if it's just an anecdotal experience, I just read it, and if I like it, I like it. If I if I don't, I don't. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. So, do you have any thoughts on the paranormal? I uh, yeah, yeah. I I mean, oh, so okay. That's it's it's a, it's a good question because so so, so I, the par- paranormal. I I think so. I read I read I've read a lot of books. Um, related to like Eastern uh, mysticism, um, so I approach pa- a lot of the paranormal through that lens. Like, it, 
Um, uh, so, so, so while yes, like like ghosts, spirits, and all those things, like they're they they, they have they have some reality to me, but I wouldn't want to extend and say that they're real to look crazy. I, I wouldn't want to look crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Which do you think is least crazy to believe in? Aliens, cryptids, or ghosts? Uh, what's the second one? Cryptids being like the Loch Ness Monster and Sasquatch. And Yeti. Um, the, those ones. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> and do you have a reason for that? Um, be- because it's, it's, it's easier for me to, to be able to see why those types of stories would come up, uh, like out of myth. Uh, and I, I would personally think, uh, rather than a ghost, uh, you know, g- ghosts. Be- because of the paranormal, I automatically already believe in that. So I can't, you know. And then, then uh, aliens, you know. Uh, aliens also, I, I to an extent, it's, it's mostly because of a lot of the information mixed in my head with all these weird esoteric subjects. <laughs> okay. Have you, do you have any personal experiences with the paranormal? Um, I would, I would, I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. So I would think something, I would think something like, like, uh, lucid dreaming, I would think is, is related to paranormal. Um, that's not paranormal. Uh, it's not paranormal? <laughs> no, it's not paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if some Loch Ness monsters are friendly, mm-hmm. and some friendly things are named Jane, is it necessarily the case that some Loch Ness monsters are named Jane? Can, can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Sure. If some Loch Ness monsters are friendly, and some things that are friendly are named Jane, is it necessarily the case that some Loch Ness monsters are named Jane? No. Okay. If only people from Iceland eat iceberg lettuce, and I eat iceberg lettuce, am I necessarily from Iceland? You want me to repeat it? Yes. Yes. If only people from Iceland eat iceberg lettuce, and I eat iceberg lettuce, am I necessarily from Iceland? Yes, you are. Okay. If no penguins eat shellfish, and I don't eat shellfish, am I necessarily a penguin? No. Okay. Can you tell me what yesterday's, yesterday's, Yesterday's tomorrow is from today, given that today is Tuesday. Uh, yesterday's. Yesterday's, yesterday's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So, three yesterdays. Yeah. Oh, Sunday. Okay. Um, can you tell me who my mother's brother's daughter is in relationship to me? Your niece? Yeah. No, your cousin. Um, um, okay, fine. Uh, let me ask you a couple of TE kind of questions here. Uh, can you break down the task of of getting a haircut into four steps uh okay 
uh, in her cut. So you, if I'm the person going to, uh, to, to get the haircut. So I go, sit down, put the cloth around to protect hair from coming down. Uh, shave, that's two, so uh, reduce level of hair. And then that's three, and then a, sh a shape up. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what's the optimal number of steps to break the task of taking the trash out into? Mm. To break uh, optimal number of, of steps to take uh, to break down taking the trash out. Yeah. Uh, how many trash bags? All right. Just one. <laughs> just one. Just one. Okay. Um. Yeah. So just take out. Take out. Uh. Yeah. Two. Two steps. Take out trash. Go throw it. Come back. Put new one. <laughs> okay. You can call that two steps, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any ideas for how to solve the problem of of drought in the western United States drought hmm um so maybe big uh, tanks big tanks of under of water maybe underground um so we'd have to save save water somehow first though yeah i i, I would not know how to solve that <laughs> i wouldn't know where to start <laughs> okay so let's play world mic power you've got the microphone and you've got 30 seconds to give advice to the people of the world it's going to get translated into every language and broadcast directly into everyone's ears what do you have to say to them uh, everyone in the world uh, needs to to know thyself and meditate and come to know that we are all one. <laughs> That's so lame. <laughs> That's what I would say if that was broadcast into my ears. Oh my god, that's so lame. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I guess my FE must have turned off at some point. Okay, anyway. Um, normally, normally I would never say that. I don't know what made me say that right there. <laughs> I mean, I've been in a kind of a bad mood all day, but you're kind of putting me in a better mood. <laughs> I, know, I must say. Okay. Well, sorry about that anyway. Let me continue with typing you. Um, so, do you really believe all this? It's all one stuff? Um, no. Yes. 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 Yes, I, I do. But, but in like, you know, more of in the, in the way an idealist would say it. Okay, um, so what what not, do you think? What do you think people what, like? What do you think people are going to take from that? Like, what's the message you're hoping people will take away from that idea? Um, I would hope that because because so so in, in in general, I think that people uh, start to fear things less the more they're exposed to the things, you know. And I think that a lot of uh, problems in the world are are fear based. Um, That's and, true. And and a lot a lot of uh, fears are from uh, quote unquote the other, right? And so it's like, oh, I would think that them learning something like that would teach them, like you know, um, or not not teach, but like kind of be like, hey, it, it would nudge them in direction like you don't have to be afraid, like you don't even have to believe that everything is one, but you don't have to also be afraid of the other person, you know? I see. Um, Sorry, I had to let the cat out. That's fine. Um, okay, so, I mean, do you think that the most conflicts stem from 
people not being able to deal with with other people who are who are <laughs> different from them like culturally or something um par- uh, par- partially I, 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 I think I mean I think it mostly it, 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 it's kind of just coincidentally so but I'll, people just generally maybe don't like uh, I mean, depending on the kind of people as well, you know, depending on the kind of people. I, I don't want to say all people, so because there's some people, you know, uh, know how to to get along with others, even if they have differences. Um, and I think others don't know how to do that. Uh, if they have differences, that the uh, only way they know how to get over it is to like battle it out and to see who wins, which is another way. It's, it's not, you know, I. I I understand. It's another way to <laughs> to actually operate in the world. <laughs> right, for sure. I mean, there definitely are some circumstances where the best approach is one of mutuality and compromise and other situations where I mean, it's better to stand your ground or whatever, you know. So, mm-hmm. life's a tricky tapestry of different things. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Let's see. Where do I want to go here? Um, Alright, let's play... Well, that's why they always say Mugity Mugity Mia. Okay? So, I'm going to give you a little anecdote. And you're going to say, well, that's why they always say... And then you're going to give me a little saying. Okay? So, for example... um, I bought this book. It had a beautiful picture on the cover. But the book inside is terrible. And you'd say, well, that's why they always say... Don't judge a book by its cover. Um... But you can make up eat your own saying. It doesn't have to be a famous saying like that, okay? All right, so here's the anecdote. Uh, I went out to brunch with Brad the other day, and he and Judy and some other friends were there. And after we were done, they said, let's go hiking. And I said, well, I've got my flip-flops on. I need to go home and put on some regular shoes. And they said, well, we don't want to wait for you. Let's just go right now. And I said, okay, I'll just go right now. Now I've got all these blisters on my feet. Oh, that's why you you always plan before going out. Okay. <laughs> plan for the day before going out. All right. Now, if you were going to make it more specific than that, mm-hmm. how what would be another saying you could give me that would be more specific than that? Um... That's 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 why you always think ahead. I think that would be more more general. That would be more general. Okay. Uh, that's why you should have called Brad and asked. All right. Good. Good. All right. Cool. Um, now, can you give me an anecdote? And uh, I'll try to tell you a saying that comes out of it. Let's switch roles. Okay. Um, mm, okay, I... Uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. So I went on, I went on a date. Uh, we're having a really a good time having dinner. Uh, and dinner is over. And uh, they bring the check, and I put my my card, and the guy takes it to the back and swipes it and comes back, and he's like, "Sorry, sir, your card is declined." Okay, that's why you should always check your bank account before going out to eat. <laughs> okay, all right, cool. Um, so, have you ever heard me ask Inky Pinky questions before? I, oh, I think I, I, I've seen a stream. Yes, yes, I've seen a stream. Let's be doing that. Yes. Okay. So, the example one is, I would give you a clue like, hilltop water spout, and I'd tell you it's an inky pinky. The answer is mountain fountain. The answer is always a rhyming pair of words. Um, okay. uh, what was that example? The, the first uh... The clue would be hilltop water spout, and then... I tell you, Inky Pinky, which tells you it's two syllables each word. 
And then the answer is Mountain Pound. Okay. All right. Got it. So how about this one? Bunny Addiction. It's an inky pinky. Um, 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 um. Easter uh Easter Eggman. <laughs> it's a rabbit habit. Ah Okay. Um now can you tell me about ratio of time you spend at home versus time you spend out doing things? I probably uh, probably eighty twenty home to out out ratio. And when you're home, are you usually consuming media? Uh yes. Do you cook much for yourself, or do you typically get takeout? Uh, typically takeout. Uh, I go into the uh, same with my sleep thing, where sometimes I get really good with sleeping for like a couple weeks, so I can get good with cooking food for like a couple of weeks and then I usually just fall back into ordering and usually cycles like that. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. So can you tell me the last time you got takeout? Today. Okay, what about before today? The last time before today? Um if I say cook, uh, last time before today Probably two weeks ago. Okay. Um, and can you tell me what it was you got when you did that two weeks ago? Can you tell me any anecdotes about it? Like your trip there, anything you remember from an insignificant, like the lady in front of you dropped something on the floor and something like that? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, from the last time, at least from the last time that I got, um, so, uh, so from the, uh, from the last time, which was, which was, uh, today, uh, what I remember at least, or, or you mean from the last, if I remember, from, are you asking from the last time I remember from two weeks or from today? From like two weeks ago. Oh, from the two weeks ago one. Um, yeah, so, so when I, I used Uber Eats, uh, I ordered to Uber Eats, and the the guy texts that I'm leaving it at the door, and uh, by the time I, by the t like as he's getting to the door and opening it, I stand right there. I, like I was getting to do it this but so it was funny. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, do you think you've changed a lot from how you were? 10 years ago, or are you still basically the same person who's just in a different set of circumstances? So, uh, so I, so I, I think both things, you know, I know that I'm not the same person, um, but I also feel like the same person I was 10 years ago, yeah. Okay. So, what do you think? What do you think about you has remained the same? What qualities have remained the same? Um, yeah, probably the way I, the, the way I, uh, largely the, the way I interact uh, with others. Uh, my interests have mostly, you know, been stable uh, over time. Um, uh. What I wear, my closet. <laughs> I have not. I, I. People have to. You have to force me to update my closet. Um. So that's remained the same. And then, even circle of friends, that has remained the same as well. Um. Uh, for the most part. Uh. Mm, are they more likely to keep up with you, or are you more likely to keep up with them? Like, 
do they touch base with you more often or do you reach out to them? Um, they're more likely to, to keep up with me. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. And do you feel as though you run out of hours in the day in which to do things you want to do or see things you want to see or do you feel as though um, you you don't use the hours of the day that you have as you wish you did not one uh, I don't I don't use it uh, as I wish I did I there's a there's a part of me that knows for a fact if I utilize the hours of the days differently, I would have much different results in terms of um, productivity. Okay. So do you think in general you trust more your your instincts or your experience? My instincts. Okay. Um... What do you think you value more in other people in the world? Uh, reliability or honesty? Um, I, th I think reli reliability. Okay. And how about reliability or kindness I would say oh god I reliability still okay how about reliability or impactfulness Another way to think about this question is would you rather have somebody produce a large amount of positive impact for you say 1,000 1, units of positive impact mm -hmm. would you rather they accomplish it all at once in one or, two, one or two actions or gradually over time in a sequence of predictable actions uh, Gradually over time and the sequence looks predictable. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. So, what is what does the emotion of sadness feel like? Mm. So, so I, I I think I think I tend to relate um, the emotion of sadness more more with the type of thoughts that I'm that I'm having during that um, during that sadness. So it's a lot more based on what I'm thinking. So if I'm thinking sad thing, if I if I'm if I'm thinking a sad thing, that's how I know I feel sad. Like I I don't think I know what sad feels like specifically. Okay. I, I just know, you know it doesn't feel like yeah yeah no. I, I I think it's more for me. It's with the thoughts. It, it has to. It has to reach uh, me thinking something to know that, um, hey, I'm, this is not what I normally do. Is the same thing true of anger, or um, is anger more clear? Anger, uh, anger is more clear. Anger is more clear. I can see it. Um, um, you can see it on my face. I react. Um, but... Are you slow to anger or quick to anger? Very slow to anger. Okay. Uh, do you think you do? You, 
Are you, you're not, are you single right now? You're not in a long-term relationship? I am single, yes. All right, so this question then is about a prospective partner that you might presumably get with. Would you rather that that person be more socially graceful to you or more fair to you? In other words, be more affirming with their words or be more consistently fair in actually how things play out? Um... I think, yeah, uh, with their words, they're uh, more affirming with their words. Okay. Um, so, if I were a human resources director and I were looking to place you in the company and I was coming to you for advice about what kind of or kind of work you do well or you'd like to do what would you tell me hmm right, well, okay um well i mean I, I i i i like to work with computers um i, I like to work with computers i like to code uh the mostly uh I, I like design, like I need like usability uh, of websites um, or apps. Uh, so if I could work in like, uh, you know, if I could work in, if I could work in maybe the graphic uh, portion um, or or segment of the of of it, uh, but more also on the more also on the code side, um, um, rather than. UI. Okay. Um. <coughs> okay. So, uh, hmm. I think I'm going to maybe ask Rachel to talk to you a little bit about more about, I guess, what you look for in a friend or a potential relationship partner or a even like a job setting. She could ask those kind of a couple of those kind of okay. questions here. I'd like to see what she gets a feel of here as well. So far you're proving fairly tricky, <laughs> I gotta tell you. Oh <laughs> uh, all right, you wanna sit on the pillow there. Goes on. Okay. Hello. Hello. So, um, tell me about uh, your friendships. Uh, what what kind of value system do you have for your friendships? Um. Hmm. Like, so when when you say value systems, like, uh, uh, what would you be? Uh, like what so do you like, what's important to you in a friendship oh okay yeah uh honesty uh like a, a, you know uh like a friend says something they don't they're not lying to me uh they're not taking advantage of me um using me for stuff um and then the way probably like the way they interact with others so I have to also like I, I. They shouldn't only treat me nice. They should treat others nice. If they don't treat others nice, that impacts me. Um. And then. Yeah, and 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 I think I think. Positivity, you know, um, more positive, uh, about, you know, uh, what they want to get done in life or. Or what we can get done in life together, or, or, or anything along those lines. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say those. Those are. Those are some good things. Um, okay, so. What about coworkers? What are some things that make a good coworker, and what are some things that make a bad coworker? Mm, okay. Uh, so, uh, 
So for me, okay, so I'll use the example in my head. Um, so like a bad coworker would be maybe if I work if I worked in a store and um, they wouldn't they they a, a worker that doesn't do their task because maybe they know someone else will come and do it or someone you know <laughs> to, mm-hmm. to go pick up after them. So you know you can spot that. Uh, yeah. uh, and then a good coworker would you know would be you know uh, make sure uh, all the tasks are done uh, for the before the the next person comes in. So like especially with the handing over work um, uh, like shifts when it's when it has to do a shift um, and I mean and also probably one that you know if they had an issue with me at work uh, one that would at least try to talk to me first uh, before going and telling a manager which could get me fired you know yeah. I would want to be thinking in that way you know because that's how I would think if I had a problem with someone, I wouldn't want to say anything because I wouldn't want to meet their life. Like, I wouldn't want to do that. So, so someone that, that doesn't try to cause drama at work, because there's about a few people that I've seen like that at uh, previous jobs. Um, but, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, do you, it sounds like in a work situation... Well, I don't want to speak for you. Um, in work situations, is knowing the hierarchy of who to talk to about if there's a problem, um, is that important to you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so someone going over your head to talk to a manager before speaking with you is something that bothers you? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, how about a prospective mate? How do you protect your mate? No, perspective. Oh, oh, perspect. Oh, what's important to you in a prospective mate? Um. Hmm. Probably. Uh. Yes. That. So that. So depend. Uh. So thinking very long term, it's like. Uh, ki- kind. I have to. I have to get along with them. I have to have to vibe. I, I think that's. Uh, we have to we have to get along. Um, but I, I, I'm not. I'm not very. Hmm. Like I just have to like them. <laughs> like I. Like, you just I, I don't have know to. To so like, uh, yeah. so just you have to like them as a person in order for you yeah. to be a, a friend with them or in a relationship yeah. with them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any kind of like accounting of? what you might call transformative moments or either small life lessons learned or big life lessons learned because of a single precise experience. For example, a small one was I one time my dad yelled at me a lot when I left a cereal bowl in the sink because cereal will stick to the side of the bowl if you leave it in there. And after that, I never left the cereal bowl in the sink. Mm. <laughs> uh, let's see... Uh Oh, okay. So this 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 was one. So um when I was younger, uh when I was uh probably about 10 or 11, uh we had a, a red Honda Civic. Um we had we had a red yeah, we had a red Honda Civic and Basically, every time, this is when I was younger, every time I'd be driving on the road, I would always notice when there were other Honda Civics on the road. Like, I would always know. Like, I'd see them, like, really easy. And then we got 
soon after, uh, soon after, as we're in the same town, soon after we got a Hyundai, uh, a green Hyundai Elantra. And almost very vividly, like the next day, I remember just seeing a bunch of Hyundai Elantras all over the place. Like, everywhere. I wouldn't see the Honda Civic as much anymore. Like, for some reason, I remember seeing that, like, different. And I was like, huh, uh, maybe I pay attention more t- to the things that I owed or, or, or that I'm part of and see them a lot more in, in the world uh, than things that I, that I don't own or not part of. Right. Okay. Um... I mean, you might call like a personal relevancy bias, you know, it's like, because it's personally relevant to you, you notice it. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. So, um, so, do you, do you ever talk to other people about typology? Um, so most of my, most of my friends, um, most of my friends are not into typology. That's the ones I've met, like, in real life through school or uh, college or anything. Uh, so although to feed that side, I did start going online to, like, find communities online that did talk about, um, uh, that, that I saw talking about typology and I... I, I'd say I've made a, I've made a few acquaintances or, or friends online that um, were even well, well one very specific person uh, we became very good friends and probably for over the last two or three years um, we talked a lot of typology uh, she was in uh, ENFP um, and yeah we would talk. Uh, the theory all day. <laughs> uh, it was very enjoyable. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, hmm. If you were left out in the woods with some camping gear and stuff for one of those survival shows, how do you think you'd do? Uh... I, I, I think I'd adapt. I think I'd adapt. I'd, I, I, I'd adapt, although I would personally, at first at least, uh, lack a lot of skills. Uh, and if they, if they, depending on if they left me there alone, if they left me there with a group, I would, I would probably start trying to find out, you know, uh, who knew stuff about this, about outside survival and if they could teach me. <laughs> Uh, have you ever watched Naked and Afraid? Yes, I have. <laughs> if if you had the opportunity to go on Naked and Afraid, would you go on it? Yes. <laughs> do you think you'd be? Do you think you'd last very long? Uh, probably not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What what do you think would take you down? Uh, cuz I I've seen ones I've seen ones where people, you know, get sick, like start getting uh maybe uh things on their skin, some rashes. Uh right. so I I, th- I think I I get done in by like like mosquitoes, even mosquitoes. Yeah, they put you in a in a bug laden area. It must be super <laughs> uncomfortable, I would guess. You know. <laughs> what would you want to bring with you if you were going to bring something with you? Um, if I could only bring one thing or or anything. Um. Yeah, I mean, assume you get you get a couple of standard things. You get like a pot. You okay. Get, oh yeah. Oh. So what would I? Oh yeah. Um. So. I mean, I'd bring I'd bring a knife. I'd bring a knife. Uh, and uh, uh, a lighter or a torch. Hmm. Torch would be good, huh? Hmm. 
a fur pen shorts like this, this would be perfect. Where is it? I don't know where I put it. Anyway, um, okay. So, uh, all right. If, if, uh, if I, what, what parts of you or, or things that you do or things that you, ways that you are, you feel like I haven't asked any questions about or gotten at yet? Hmm. I, uh, I guess maybe, 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 uh, maybe politics or. Okay. Uh, Talk to me about your politics or your relationship with politics. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, so I take, I've taken one of, uh, one of like the, uh, test that gives you where you where you stand uh, on on the sk on the skills, and I typically get uh, so, uh, libertarian socialist. Um, so I, I usually I use that like as a, a rough guide, but 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 basically, in general, I think the the richer a society gets, the the more able it should be able to. Uh, to lift up its most lowest uh, people in society, and the less it's doing that, the more I'm able to tell that you know there's a certain dysfunction uh, going on, um, or not not dysfunction or make it functioning perfectly, but um, I, it doesn't look nice to me. Um, but uh, yeah, I. I I, I so I I'm I mostly I'm probably more left uh, in general. Um, okay. Politic. And how much time do you spend like reading about political stuff? It's it's very it's very sporadic, and that's 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 one of the things with me. I have very uh, I I my 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 interests shift a lot. Um, so I, I, like maybe a couple years ago, I, I would maybe three, four, five hours a day, uh, be watching like a podcast, uh, about politics, uh, opinion shows about, uh, uh, politics. Um, and I would be very in, involved, uh, in talking about it and commenting, but then I, then my interests slowly like slide into something else, uh, and then I get very, very like focused on that um, for maybe the next few months or a year. Uh, but but I tend to circle around all of them, so I know that it will eventually be something political again, and then you know. It's, it's, so so now now maybe more. Uh, I, I think now maybe I'm yeah I think now I'm I'm uh, a little sucked in into uh, reading a lot about like uh, philosophical stuff like that I think that's what I'm sucked into now. Uh, okay, so what non-typology philosophical stuff do you read about? Um. So. Uh, so non-typology related. So basically, like. The, so uh, the different the different uh, so uh, so currently uh, so I, uh, uh, currently I've been maybe very interested in uh, the differences between idealism and materialism. Uh, I, I think so. I, I think I've been trying to find as many people on both sides that write about them that I can. And I've just been trying to to see which one is true, and I feel myself leaning towards. The uh, the idealism side right now, uh, uh, as 
in, in, in real time. Okay. And how would you um, nutshell the, those two sides, idealism and materialism? I, I, I would say they just don't understand each other. Um, I, I, I would say that they are both correct. Um, that depending on where they're looking from, or where they're starting from, or the purpose, or, or the goal at least, uh, uh, you, you could... You, you're, you're, they're speaking a, a different language. You know, they're, 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 they're not speaking the same language, it, it looks like. Uh, because there's, I think there's a lot of confusion um, with m- maybe, for example, a lot of material, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a lot of materialist thinking that, um, that idealism is saying that everything is mental or that everything is in some in, in someone said so which would sound a lot more like solipsism uh which maybe that's the you know that's 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 what i that's the way i see um i the way i see idealism described by a materialist sounds like solipsism is, is what i'm trying to say um while it is not in reality um uh while, while it is not in reality say uh the the position that that is held by like um, most real I- ideas. Um, okay. So, mm-hmm. cool. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, let me talk to Rachel for a second, and I'm gonna put myself on mute here. Okay. Any thoughts? Um, for TE, uh, like even trying to get him to uh, list out things that he likes in a partner was pretty difficult. Um, seems so FB too. Right, it certainly does. I just don't know if it's INFJ. I think it is. That's what hurt to me too. I think it is. Okay, well, good. We're on the same page. All right, cool. I don't think he thinks he is one either. <laughs> That's a funny thing. He's a very outgoing one. Right? Well, I mean, you know, it's a typing <laughs> session. Okay, so here's what Rachel and I both concluded independently of each other is that you're an INFJ. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. And I, I, I said to her before we announced it, I don't think he thinks he's one. So, so first, first, um, for probably three, four years, I had thought I was, I, I had thought I was INTP. Um, because I thought I loved TI, you know? Um, but, yeah, no, 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 what I start, I think more when I started watching, uh, uh, watching your content is when I started seeing like the use of of TI a lot, and then I that's what you know that's 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 what I knew what TI like looked like. Uh, so then I I think after that I read I I was reading Young and it just uh, like it was just very fun reading the book. The book is just like the sentences and like I, I love every sentence in the book. <laughs> I mean, he's an INFJ, so <laughs> <laughs> he well, he thought he was an INTP too. So you know, <laughs> shit, shit happens. <laughs> um, so it's interesting. So, did you at some point conclude that you were more likely an INFJ than an INTP, or what? I did. Oh, okay, I did. cool. I did. So, um, so that's, this comes as no big surprise to you. All right, cool. Your TE answers were interesting because you did a good job of faking like you were answering the TE questions, but you still there weren't any kind of TE answers. Like you're telling me that it takes two steps to take the trash out and then saying three steps but saying it as two steps or something, you know. 
It's very, very it's, TE um, polar. My, my, my brother is an ENTJ, and we, we are like, we are like this because when he sees me trying to do TE, he just wants to, like, I can see him <laughs> wanting to punch me because it's like, why would you even? <laughs> <laughs> Only if you were trying to do the wrong thing is 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 what you would do if you did what I did. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad that, that uh, everybody is in agreement. <laughs> that's always nice. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, I will stop this recording now. Do you want me to share it with you privately, or are you comfortable with me publishing it? Um, I'm fine with you publishing it. All right, fantastic. So I'll put it up this evening, and it should be published within an hour. Awesome. All right, thanks so much.